Dramatically chiseled red sandstone, twisting canyons, and tree-clad mountains punctuate desolate stretches of the Mojave Desert, making this 300,000 acres of remote and rugged landscape in southeastern Nevada a truly unique place. Welcome to Gold Butte National Monument. Well, good morning, everybody. Today we are in the Beaver Dams Conservation Area in Northwest Arizona. We stopped here and camped after we left Northern Utah last night. One of the uh, things I really like about this area, it is the closest to Northern Utah that uh, you can get to in the wintertime where you get down into some nice warm temperatures. This is kind of the most northeastern section of the Mojave Desert, so you get into Joshua trees and Choya cactus and creosote brush and all that kind of good stuff. So uh, it's a great place to camp. We camped right over here last night, and I will put the coordinates to this area here, so if you decide you want to come out and check it out for yourselves, you'll be able to find this campsite. But there's a lot of really good dispersed camping in the area. Uh, you can get to it off of, uh, I think it's Highway uh, 97. So it used to be the original highway in between St. George and the Mesquite area. And it's a really nice drive if you ever get a chance and you've got some time. I would highly recommend taking that drive and checking it out. But today we are going to be heading into Gold Butte National Monument this afternoon. So I have done a few videos already about Gold Butte National Monument. I will put the links to them right up here and you can go check them out. But we're going to be getting into some different areas of the monument. So Gold Butte National Monument is close to 400,000 acres. So it's pretty big. It's a big chunk of land. And we're going to go into some areas that I've never been in before. And we're going to take all you guys along with us. It should be a lot of fun. All right, well, good morning, everybody. We made it to Gold Butte last night, and we found this fantastic campsite right behind us here. And I will put the coordinates to where this campsite is, so if you'd like to come out here, you can. Um, you're gonna need a high clearance four wheel drive vehicle to get up to this spot. There is a road that comes up here. It's cool to camp up here, but uh, you're gonna need to have a capable vehicle to get in here. But if you do get out here, this is the view. So this is looking up towards a place called Whitney Pockets, and that big mountain in the background is Virgin Peak. So we're going to go down in this canyon and hike down here a ways to check things out, and we're gonna take all you guys along with us. So some of this hike here is going to be a choose your own adventure. Um, there is a trail that runs along the bottom of this wash down here, and we're going to meet that and hike down it a ways. But to this point, we just pretty much decided to find our way down this hill and get down to the bottom of the wash. Created on July 10, 2015, this monument protects nearly 300,000 acres of desert landscape and features a wide variety of natural and cultural resources, including rock art, sandstone towers, old growth Joshua trees, and important wildlife habitat. The area also protects historic ranching and mining sites such as the ghost town of Gold Butte. The brightly hued sandstone provides a stunning canvas for the area's famously beautiful rock art, and the desert provides critical habitat for the Mojave Desert tortoise, desert bighorn sheep, bald and golden eagles, cooper's hawks, mountain lions, sidewinders, desert kangaroo rats, and much more.
area is popular for outdoor recreation, and visitors to the monument can hike to rock art sites, drive the Gold Butte Backcountry Byway to the area's namesake mining ghost town, view desert bighorn sheep, or tour the area's peaks and canyons on horseback. The monument contains over 500 miles of motorized recreation trails. This area is also sacred to the Mawapa Band of Paiute Indians and the Las Vegas Paiute Tribe and includes thousands of petroglyphs and traces of human habitation such as agave roasting pits and shelters dating back to over 12,000 years. While individual petroglyph sites are important individually, they derive their sacred nature from their relationship to other sites through physical and spiritual trails and histories that connect them, making Gold Butte National Monument a landscape of interconnections. All right, so we're gonna head down to the bottom of this wash where our trail is waiting for us. This is a big grove of trees. Wow, look how big the trunk is on this one. Uh, we're gonna come over here and kind of walk along this wall and see if we can see anything. That's the thing with this area is there are a lot of petroglyphs to be found, but you just gotta spend your time and look around. Well, I think I see something going on over here. Oh, look at this. Wow. There's more here and up here. Looks like some kind of a, a deer. This is some antlers. Not quite sure what this is. Wow. Here's some more. Got some right in here. This one goes all the way up. Look at that. I think I found some more. We're gonna go uh, take a look up here. And I see some over in that one. We'll go up to these first. Wow, oh, look at those. A pitchfork and a chicken's foot. I don't know though. Shouldn't listen to my translations. Gonna wander up here and check it out. Got kind of brushy in here and I'm in shorts. Ouch. Ah, there we go. Wow, this looks cool in here.
Now, a little slot canyon back here. Let's go take a look. I don't know if I'm gonna be fitting through that over there. All right. <clears throat> See how well this will go. Ah, it's nice and cool in here. Ouch. Some of these things have thorns on them. Give us a smile. Isabel found a perfect seat. Yeah. All right, if you come up here, you're gonna have to come back down this. Maybe there's a way to climb out up above, but we had to leave our packs here, so. It has sure turned into a nice day. When we got here yesterday, it was really windy Bits of rain, lots of clouds, lots of sunshine too. It was really nice, but today, perfect. Wow, this Joshua tree is huge. Regular tree. So we are just wandering adjacent to the trail. The trail is just over there, but uh, we decided to stay on these rocks and see if we could find any other panels. Because uh, like I said earlier, there's a lot of stuff around here that is known about, but there is also a lot of uh, things that you can find if you uh, get off the main path and wander around a bit. All right, here we are back at the trail. It is just gorgeous out here today. So the trail continues down here and it'll get you to more petroglyph panels over in this rock area you see before us. But I think we're done with this adventure. We're gonna turn around and head back up to camp and get ourselves some lunch. So we'll be back with you in a few. So we had a pretty good day when uh, we got back from our hike this morning. Uh, it was nice and sunny and warm for a while, but then it got windy and cloudy and rained a bit. We had to get into the truck and watch a movie, but uh, things have cleared up and we're gonna take a hike down here and we're gonna take all of you guys along with us. It's real nice geology around here. I like this red sandstone, it's pretty nice.
Boy, it sure has turned out to be a beautiful evening. I love seeing the sunshine hitting Virgin Mountain there. So we are going to head down here and into the wash, and this wash will run down to the other wash that we started at to get up into this area. So we're going to uh, head back to camp. Well, good morning, everybody. We uh, made it through the night, had a really nice night last night. The moon, I think, was almost full. It was really bright. Got kind of cold, though. We woke up to frost this morning on the uh, cooler and the dog bed and that kind of stuff. But it's warmed up really nicely since, and we are going to walk from our campsite, which you can see behind us here. Uh, we are going to take a hike up in that direction. You can see there's kind of a road that goes up there, and we're going to go up to one of these ridges up here. Yeah, this should be a pretty cool area to be able to look over, or it should enable us to look over down into the area where uh, this place called Little Finland is. You're going to see Little Finland next because we're going there later on today. But uh, it's a pretty cool area of sculpted red rock and uh, kind of resembles Valley of Fire a little bit, but it's not as big, but it's a really cool area. So, so we should have a really good view once we get up here on the top of this ridge. Yeah, it sure looks like uh, we're going to have a repeat of yesterday. Morning started out really nice and sunny and warm, and we start getting a nice breeze blowing. And by the afternoon, it billows up into thunderstorms. Didn't rain a whole lot, but it's pretty dramatic. Maybe some really nice time lapses. But this is a really nice place out here. I, uh, we haven't seen anybody for a couple of days since we got in here. There was a trailhead, and uh, we did see some fresh footprints on the trail last night. But uh, other than that, nobody's come up to this area here, so it's been pretty nice and secluded. This hike is pretty much just a hike up this road, and then when it gets up to this top area, we'll cut across over to the uh, ridge line that I had pointed out to you earlier, so pretty easy to find. But in this monument, there are a few trails, and we're going to take you on a couple of them in the next couple of days. But most of the, you know, if you really want to get out in the good stuff, it's pretty much route finding and choose your own adventure. That's what we did for last night's hike. Yeah, we kind of did that for the hike yesterday morning, but we were just wandering adjacent to the main trail anyway. All right, there's this little spot here off the road. It actually looks like it's an old road cut, but this is uh, what we're gonna take and work our way over to that ridge. Looking down into this area is the Little Finland area. A couple of those other red rock areas out there contain more petroglyphs and the Seven Keyholes Slot Canyon, which we'll be getting to in the next couple days. All right, we're gonna uh, hike down here a little bit.
All right, so we've been hanging out, enjoying this spectacular view behind us, but we're going to pack up and head back down to the truck. So we'll see you guys in a little bit. So this is the Bear Poppy Restoration Area, and I'm just going to read what this sign says. Behind this post and cable fence is a large population of the Las Vegas Bear Poppy. Las Vegas Bear Poppies in Nevada occur exclusively in Clark County from the Las Vegas Valley to Lake Mead. These plants grow only in gypsum soils from taproots as long as 12 feet. Bear Poppies cannot be transplanted. Habitat losses from development, mining, and off-road vehicles have made the Las Vegas bear poppy vulnerable to extinction. Protected areas such as this one will allow the plants to replenish the seed bank in the soil so that new generations of plants will be produced. And of course it says to please protect these areas by staying on designated roads and trails and respect, protect, and enjoy your public lands. We pulled off at this parking area here and we're going to hike up this trail and take a look at some pictograph panels. This is a fairly known spot. This isn't some place that's hidden in the backcountry. This is something that just about anybody can drive up to and check out. considering where these guys came up to do all of this work. You know, maybe it was one of their colleagues that accidentally fell. You know, that's good 30, 40 feet. You could definitely get hurt. Well, this is quite a nice area. And that was quite a grand entrance here. If you come out to do this, be prepared to have to crawl through a little cave to get here. But boy, is it worth it. The colors on these rocks, this view, very cool place. If we turn around over here, we have some other really nice pieces. I'm not sure if these were some that used to be here and someone scratched them out. This area here looks like it's had some work done. You can see there's some uh, areas, but this is all recently scratched out. Yeah, right here. Wow. Pretty impressive. Man was the first one to find. 
So we're gonna head back to the truck and we're gonna go deeper into the monument and show everybody else a few more things I think you'll like to see. So we'll see you in a little bit. So we made it to this fine campsite right here. I've camped here before, so I knew about it, but uh, this place is a great place to be for access to three really nice hikes. The first one, of course, is this area over here. This is Little Finland, all of these red rocks over here. And we're gonna go do a hike into there tomorrow, so I'll be able to show everybody what that looks like, because it's really, really cool. Over in this direction, in these red rocks, we're gonna go over there and do a little hike Maybe this evening, maybe tomorrow evening. It's pretty close from where we're camped here, so we could just walk up to the trailhead. And this other area over here is where the Seven Keyholes Slot Canyon is. Now, if you are interested in seeing what kind of a hike that is, I did a video about it last year. I'll put the link right up here, and you can go and check that one out. It's a really, really nice hike. So we're going to kick back and relax a bit, and I, I'm going to make some space in the cooler by drinking some beer. We'll see you guys in a few. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And if you would like to see more videos about hiking, camping, and exploring America's public lands, consider subscribing to this channel if you haven't already, and you can join us next time for another adventure. We'll see you then.